It's happening, Morgan. I seen you the other night. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I seem really choppy on my end. Am I good on you on your guys' end? You are yeah. clear and smooth. Okay, all good, all good. Um, yeah, smooth. yeah, yeah. You're smooth uh, just like you did a show. <laughs> <laughs> oh what <laughs> right into it we're going right into it <laughs> wow. <All right. laughs> yeah no shows for me in the near future <laughs> well well welcome buddy we're really happy that to have you back on here you were um yeah. uh you were one of our first guests way back in the day when we were just getting started and look at us now <laughs> yeah, it's thanks to what's that how many episodes do you guys have now? Uh, we're getting close, I think, up around the 70, 70-some. 70 That's good, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming back. I, I guess yeah. the, I guess we weren't too bad. <laughs> you were willing to come back <laughs> to spend a little bit of your time. I know you only have uh, uh, about an hour or so, so we just uh we're just kind of curious about what is what's going on how you're doing and then maybe we'll do a, like uh we just had the atlantic the atlantics here and the goddess competition we're just going to do a little bit of a breakdown for all the local viewers that are interested towards the end of the show if everyone wants to hang around for that i think that will be really fun and interesting to take a look at yep mm. so yeah no for me um well, I moved out to uh, Burlington, Ontario, just outside of Toronto there back I in November. I see that. Yeah, yeah. So that was obviously for the purpose to, you know, kind of level up my atmosphere for bodybuilding so I continue to get better. Uh, mm. I just felt like I did everything I could in Newfoundland, you know. Like I got good enough to turn pro, did my pro debut, um, which was all great. But I, I realized as I was prepping for those pro shows that I did, that I really need to have better equipment. I need, you know, training partners, just, just right. better people who are better at bodybuilding than me to push me mm -hmm. and make me motivated and to make me want to get better. It's really hard to progress when you're a big fish in a small pond for a long time. Right. You, know, you, you obviously try to push yourself as hard as you can, but when you're the biggest guy and the best guy, it's easy to get complacent, you know? Yeah, yeah. you find your perspective is a little bit different, right? A little bit skewed. When you go uh, in, yeah, 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 totally. You know, it, it all worked out fine, but I, I just knew after those pro shows that I did that it was time for me to leave Newfoundland and and you know do the things I thought I needed to do to get better. And so far, it's been working out, you know, pretty well. I, uh, you know, I train with Antoine Vallant now, obviously, who's a great bodybuilder. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I was lucky enough to um, you know do his Arnold prep with him, and you know those are some of the most brutal training sessions of my life, and. And it's just brought up my fancy to a whole new level. Like I remember the first couple of leg days that we did together. Like I've always trained legs hard. Like legs are. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. But training legs with that guy just made me feel like a complete pussy. And then I was, like, hey, you know, there's levels to this. You know, there there is. And uh, when you're training with Olympians, you're either forced to level up or you can just go home. Right. right? And not, I didn't. I didn't move from Newfoundland to come up here and do the same stuff that I was doing in Newfoundland, you know? So, so yeah, so that was great. And, and me and him still train together every, uh, every training day. So that's oh, really that's good. So cool. That's, that's, oh, yeah. awesome. that's awesome. Yeah. 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 We've become pretty good friends. Uh, we actually do a podcast together now over at the IFBB AMA. Uh, they have like their own website where they put a podcast right. on. Um, mm -hmm. So it'll be me, me, him and Frank McGrath will be doing one weekly. Uh, now going forward so pretty excited for that too so yeah coming out here has, has you know presented lots of opportunities for me it's also much easier for like traveling and stuff like that because obviously i'm always traveling out east for bodybuilding shows yeah. and going different places for bodybuilding events and traveling out of newfoundland was just like so damn expensive to go oh anywhere. man and, yeah very long and, too just to come to like yeah. halifax or moncton yeah yeah like we had to basically fly to toronto first to go anywhere you know, and now, now I live in Toronto, so it makes it makes Cut a big that out. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, all all is good, man. Just you know, continuing to live the dream, bodybuild, try to. Yeah, get you really dream. are. That's pretty yeah, cool. yeah, no, yeah, hundred percent. I, I I manifested all of this. 
You know, yes. like I, yeah. I remember when I started my journey, like I, I knew I was going to be a pro one day. I just wasn't going to stop until it happened. And then after that happened, I started to think more about moving out here to kind of live in a place that bodybuilding was more popular and had more opportunities. So I worked my ass off coaching people to put myself in a financial position to come out here and, and do it without being like financially stressed. And uh, I mean, great. And things just keep coming to fruition of how I kind of plan them. So I'm hoping to continue my manifestation into next year and hopefully win one of these pro shows and get to the Olympia. So keep moving on. You know, that, that might take yeah. some time. You never know. But, you know, I, I definitely I know I'm doing all the things I need to do now to try to at least make that happen. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. So when you moved up there, uh, obviously you left family and friends behind. I'm sure you had a lot of support. Was it a hard choice or was it just like, this is just it and something I got to do? Uh, so basically I, I had been wanting to do it for a long time. Uh, to be honest, the only thing that was keeping me in Newfoundland was uh, two dogs that I had. Uh, they were two hey, uh, kind of horses. And uh, I did everything with them because I worked from home. You know, I was with them all the time. Uh, unfortunately I had to get one of them put down when I was about six weeks out from Toronto pro and then, and then when I was two weeks out from Vancouver pro, I was playing in my front yard with one of, with the other one that I had and he had a heart attack and died right in front of me. Holy smokes. Wow. It was a lot. Damn. It was a lot. It was tough. Um, but and when that happened, I, I just knew I was out of there. There was right. nothing to do. You know, of course, you know, there's family and friends and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but they all knew <laughs> that I had to do what I did. Like, you know, like For it was, sure. yeah. they could see me. And, and my parents, like, you know, 100% support me. And I was lucky that my girlfriend was nice enough to come with me. So I didn't have to leave her behind. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that right, wouldn't uh, have been fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that would have been a tough one. It took a little bit of convincing, but she's out here now. She's an online coach as well, so she's she's kind of doing her thing. And, nice. You know, once, once she got used to it out here, because, you know, I, I came out here, I know people. Like, I have friends out mm-hmm. here. So right. Like well, he did it, you know, so she made a pretty big sacrifice there for me, uh, which I'm still paying her back for. But I think you always will be. be. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's how that goes. <laughs> As long as I'm doing this bodybuilding thing, I'm I'm in constant debt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What you can. I just got to turn on my light. <laughs> Sun's um, going down. Yeah, yeah. All good. All good. Um, but yeah. So, I mean, we're I do I do miss Newfoundland. I've already been back once, um, and, and we're going back again in July. That's the thing too. It's like it's like a three hour flight to get home, you know. And I got that's not too yeah. So it's like it's nothing to go back. It's more so we got we got another dog here now, so uh, we, we plan to bring him with us when we travel back there in the summer oh. for a couple. Of weeks, so that should that should be fun. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. Pretty cool. Awesome, Morgan. What, what's your weight at now? Uh, I'm hanging around like 325 in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> I got as high as uh, I was as high as like 328, but that was when I was like like blasting, obviously. And now I've been on TRT for like a few weeks, so we're just in that phase now of uh, in between cycles, basically. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to get my blood checked uh, this week and to get some heart tests and stuff like that done, uh, just to make sure everything's good there, and then. Hopefully in another five or six weeks, we'll be pushing up again. So basically right now I'm trying to hold this weight mm-hmm. and not get fat. And then uh, you're doing a good job at that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, honestly, it's, it's funny, right? I was just talking to my buddy about this. Like when I was, when I was blasting there, you know, four or five weeks ago, I, had to, I was pushing food so hard uh, to try to get my weight up. And it was hard for me to even like stay around 325. And now that I've come off everything, I'm eating less, and I'm just like strength is going up in the gym. Like just I'm like, staying bigger. So, yeah, I, I kind of feel like maybe with all the food and and, and the you know supplements that um, I was just bogging my body down a little bit. Yeah, uh, I think it was kind of just stalling out a little. Yeah, it's yeah, almost it's like, like just poison when you put too much in there at once. 
sometimes that's the case, man, you know, and it's, it's always trying to find that line, right? Because, you know, if you're not growing and you're eating a lot and you're pushing hard in the gym, sometimes your only train of thought is, oh, I need to eat more. I need to yeah. take more, right? Whereas, uh, yeah, so I guess it's, it's a bit of a, a learning lesson. But another thing we did too, we were training five days a week and now we're training four days a week. So that's probably going to lead to better recovery and not having to take not, not, not having to take as, as much food as well, uh, which is always good. I, I think bodybuilding is all about getting the most out of the least. And oh, definitely. Can, even even with yeah. training too, right? Yeah. Training, absolutely. Training beats up yeah. your body, right? It beats your joints. Yeah. Uh, food beats up the digestive system and drugs beat up your organs. <laughs> so the, yeah. the less you can do it all and get a good result that is always the goal. You know? what, what kind of okay. calories do you, do you go up to? Morgan, how much, how much do you uh, normally eat? So when I was, I was at about 7,200 calories a day there for like, probably, <laughs> yeah, that was tough, man. That was tough. We had to, yeah. we had to make like my pre-workout, yeah, we had to make my pre-workout meal like muffins and like a protein shake uh, for a bit because, yeah, I was yeah. Like, yeah and, and if I did like a cream, or, like a, it was supposed to be cream of rice, but I found I was eating that and then, uh. I would just be so bloated, like trying to train. So once we switched to some more calorie dense foods, it became a little bit easier. Uh, but yeah, I, I wouldn't wish 7,000 calories on anybody. Oh, man. <laughs> no. That's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot of time. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot of food. Like you see it. Jesus, you be eating all the time. Yeah. Like, Cause I mean, it, would take, you, it would take you half I, an hour I, to eat I, it for sure. Yeah, they're big meals, you know, and like, and in prep, like in prep, like you just can't wait to eat. It's all you think about, and like you, right. you yeah. enjoy the time you're eating. It's like when you when your meal is over, you're just like, oh no. It's but when you're in, uh, when, when in the off season, it's like I look forward to the time that I'm not eating, <laughs> like in between yeah. meals. Like, <laughs> you know? my, my coach like gives me a cheat meal, and I'm just like, can I just skip a meal? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, <laughs> can I just not have one, and that will be the cheat yeah. meal. Right. So, uh, so yeah, but you know, just, just doing what's required and, and what I'm told by my coach basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, who is your coach oh, now? It's working. I, yeah. I'm with Dorian Hamilton. Uh, again. Oh, so Dorian oh, yeah. and I worked together, uh, back, you know, like 2018 to 2019. And then, uh, we split mostly because he just became so busy with his businesses and we also realized that we were going to compete against each other at the 2021 nationals where I turned pro. Yeah. So, oh, you yeah. know, there was a bit of a conflict of interest there because we were in the same division. Yeah. So, uh, but then when I moved out here, uh, I had another coach who, uh, who helped me with Vancouver, uh, Skylar, uh, Shum. He's like a amateur bodybuilder out here. He's a really good bodybuilder. And I had planned on working with him, but when I moved out here, uh, I met Doreen in the gym and then we got to talking and he told me how he'd like to take me back. And it seemed like the right move just because we worked really well together before, especially with growing. Like Dorian was the first person who got me into the 320s. He taught me a lot about digestion and, and, and health and how to take care of myself as I put on this size. Um, so to have an opportunity to work with him again, I just kind of couldn't, I couldn't turn it down. Yeah, um, understandable. Yeah, you know, and and Skyler again, like shout out to that guy. He's he's a class act. Uh, he, he took it well, but you know, I think Skyler's going to be a pro very soon. <laughs> so it yeah, would be tough sure. again, to, be, to be coached by someone you're competing against. So I think it would kind of be better to make that switch now rather than get in like deep with with him, and then he turns pro, and then we're competing against each other, and then obviously. Who wants to do that, right? Yeah. So, for uh, sure. yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, that's kind of what happened there. So, uh, but yeah, Dorian's great, man. He's, he's, he's a really good coach. He really invests in his clients. And, uh, you know, he's one of those guys that's just always there for you, you know? Yeah. Perfect. Good. That's a good fit. Cool. Yeah, man. Do you that's... train at uh, Pure Muscle and Fitness? Yeah. I mean, that's most of the reason why I moved here was to train at that gym. You know, they, they just have. <clears throat> every piece of equipment that you can imagine. Um, and for my style of training, it's machines are <laughs> with free weights. I find, uh, I, I have to lift so heavy. It's just dangerous. Um, yep. for, like, yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of at the same point. 
Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like I, I <laughs> you know, I was. We were we were messing around with three weights for a bit when I first got here, and like we were up to like you know one sixties, one seventies on chest press and stuff, and like it's just like when you get to that weight, it's like it's fine when the weights are in position and you're pressing them, but when like, but getting them in position, them there. Get them out of position yeah. and trying to and trying to push the failure safely is tough, right? And it's just not worth it when you have a gym that has you know twenty five chest presses in it, right? Like makes right? sense. So. Yeah, we pretty much exclusively use machines and cables at this point. And uh, my joints have never felt better. Like, I don't have any sore elbows. I have no sore knees. I have no sore hips. Nothing at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just going to mention big... that about, like, yeah, the, the body mechanics changes a little bit. And then yeah. <clears throat> I find, like, yeah, injury prevention on machines is, like, is, is, is great, right? Everything just kind of moves a little bit smoother that way. Yeah, and, and we're lucky out here because – there's pure muscle and fitness and then they have pure muscle athletics, which is a huge warehouse attached to the gym. Like they're, they're a huge equipment distributor. So they outfit gyms, you know, they just outfitted Chris That's Bumstead's cool. new gym. Right? Yeah. So um, we get the newest of everything. And when something breaks, it's fixed right away. And, you know, it's, <laughs> it's so impressive. It's, it's so impressive what these machine equipment companies are doing these days. Like they're really, understanding bodybuilding more and the mechanics of bodybuilders and what our goals are. And you can see how they're making machines specific to what we're looking for. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's translating in the physiques, honestly, that, that we're seeing oh. like just, the cause it gives you the ability to isolate muscles properly. And I think that's what bodybuilding is. And I think that kind of gets, that's been getting somewhat lost in the sense of people being super caught up in progressive overload mm -hmm. these days yeah. where they're just, Every time in the gym, they got to add five pounds or add 10 pounds to their lifts. And that's how they're measuring progress when bodybuilding isn't about that. Bodybuilding is learning how to no. isolate muscles and keep tension on the target muscles throughout the range of motion. And that doesn't always require a heavier weight. You can progressively overload a muscle by getting having better technique, having better form, but most of all, developing a better mind-muscle connection. Because if I'm 100%. doing a chest press, if I'm doing a chest press with 380 pounds and – but I, I need to use my, my triceps and my shoulders to move the weight while well, I'm not isolating my chest very well. Whereas if I do 225 and I'm only using my chest, that's going to be much more effective for bodybuilding, right? Because you're, you're distributing the tension over less muscles. Like the more the tension gets distributed among more muscles, the less the muscle you're trying to hit actually takes. And therefore, you won't cause as much growth, right? right. So I think machines are excellent for that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find like um, that tends to be like a lot of, especially like with the amateurs or like a lot of maybe in some pros, that's uh, a big learning curve. Do you find like it takes a long time for, for that to click in or like kind of going yeah, in instead of the mind muscle connection? Yeah. I, I mean, I think you can only beat a dead horse for so long. Like, I, you know, I, I think I think progressive overload has a, has a great purpose. I think it's great to do that, like, in your earlier years in bodybuilding because, like you said, like, developing a really good mind-muscle connection with all the muscles in your body takes a long time. It, it takes a lot of repetition, a lot of practice. So you can't, like, get a newbie, like, a new bodybuilder in the gym and, like, try to get them to train like that. Like, it's kind of better for them just to move good weight with good form, right? As long as the good form is there and, and they're doing things safely – you're going to stimulate the muscles to grow. It's only more, it's only at the more advanced levels that you need to understand what I said a minute ago about not distributing the tension among a bunch of muscles and just trying mm -hmm. and learning how to keep all the tension on the muscle you're trying to work. Right. So I think that's just something that comes with time. And yeah. I think, uh, you need to eventually, you have to eventually let go of this lifting heavier is going to be better because yeah. you're just going to hurt yourself. And you're gonna, you know, mess up your physique, and then if you can't train, you can't bodybuild. So, right, yeah. You hear that, kids? That's coming <laughs> straight from like 300 plus pound guy, right there. Straight from the like horse's mouth. Yeah. Like literally, like I'm, less, I was doing less weight on the calf eight, machine, like John. Twenty five pounds. Less weight on the calf machine, eight. buddy. Less less weight on the calf machine. Got it. Thanks, Andy. Right. Every single friggin' yeah. time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, dude. I feel like. On calves, I do like a third of the stack at most. Like, See? I'll just do yeah. 15, 20, really nice tempo, full range of motion, focus on the stretch. You know, like, like we train, we train our arms today, and like I'm doing like, I'm curling like 25 pound dumbbells, like 30 pound dumbbells. 
I can curl sixties if I want, right? But but I'm not going to feel anything, right? No. I'm just going to I'm just going to be pulling with my bicep tendon, <laughs> right? Yeah, so makes sense. Yeah, I found a, I found a better way after I tore my bu- both biceps and the tricep. I said it's got to change. Yeah. So I, it, took, I started, it took three times. Three, three, three times. <laughs> but but I, I've been doing I've been doing that since 2016, Morgan. What you're saying, and after I tore the first yeah. first bicep, but they they well, still take two points. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes it takes an injury, man. Like you know, I uh, I've had my my share in the past. I tore my bicep actually not long after I moved out here. And it, again, it was doing something stupid. You know, me and Antoine were just getting caught up and just doing super heavy rows, uh, six plates on T-bar rows. I was just pulling the weight just for the sake of moving it, just all hyped up. And I have a, had a partial tear in my like proximal bicep head. So like the upper bicep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you can you can notice it a little bit. Like there's a, a little bit of a gap there now, but the biceps a bit more peak. Luckily it wasn't more serious. But it wasn't something I could get surgery on or anything like that, and it oh. didn't take me out of the gym for very long. But that's good. It was a huge lesson because it could have been for yeah. what I was doing. It could have been so much worse. So that was kind of like my reality check. Like, hey, dude, like you didn't do yeah. this. You didn't get to where you are by doing this shit. So like, don't do it. Right. Just stick with what works for you, right? And yeah. so honestly, since I hurt my arm, I haven't touched a free weight. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> awesome. Kind of makes me feel better yeah. about my choices lately. Working with all machines yeah. too, yeah. No, dude, that's that's bodybuilding. I think I think that's exactly what it's made for, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I love so, them. I love training that way. Yeah, yeah, me too. I, find me it's too. The best. I, made, I made the best. Made the best progress now in the last say ten years of doing that. Yeah, and you can push yourself really safely. Like if you fail on a machine, like you're good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you don't have to worry about dropping the weight or or you know something happening. Uh, with a free weight, uh, with the machines. And, and even if you have a good training partner, it's so easy for them to help you with force reps and stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. um, I, I think they're, they're, they're terrific. And I just laugh so much when I see these posts on social media about like, what's better free weight or machines, or, you know, you free, you got to do free weights. And it's like, no, you don't, you just have to know how to yeah. train. You just don't stimulate the muscle. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, exactly. It. And like, know how to know what intensity is and how to train with purpose and intensity. And I think it's a, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Effort trumps all. Yeah. So, um, before we get into the Atlantics and and whatnot, I want to take a step back and you were just talking about you training with Antoine and we were saying, I'm just really curious about what the difference was from your training in Newfoundland to coming to, to um ontario and how you what what changed for you guys or what changed for you when you started training together and what was that leg day like (laughs) those leg days man um intensity i would say i would i would the reason why we decided to keep training together we basically just went up for one shoulder workout and we kind of figured out that we trained similar in a sense of like speed and pace and like we don't take very long rest times we like drop sets we like super sets we like force reps um nice, nice. So, so that was good and, and i know that's what he was looking for in a training partner for the arnold i know he had tried training with some other guys from the gym and nobody really had a style that matched up with his or was intense as as his was uh and also our strength is like right on par so oh, cool. you know we kind of yeah, we basically lift the same weights everything that we do which makes it really easy right um those leg days so man oh man um we would always start with like adductor uh then we would usually do like a hand curl we would do a leg extension uh then we'll do you know a couple of brutal sets of hack squats always in like nice. the 15 to 20 rep range like six seven plates aside uh, then we'll do like leg press, like 10, 12 plates aside, sets of 20. And then we would always do a set of leg press where basically your last set, you would just keep going and your training partner, as you start to fail, would just like peel plates off. But you just wouldn't stop. Like you just keep going and he would just keep running back and forth and taking plates off. So those would always bury you pretty uh, good. Awesome. I love that. That's cool. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> love that. Yeah. Then we do like an RDL movement or a stiff leg deadlift. 
and then we would end the workout. Uh, and you got so you remember at this point, like you're you're fucked. Oh, you're <laughs> like, you're done. Yeah. You're yeah. yeah. <laughs> After the leg press and everything, I was like, you're done. And then he would always want to do some crazy shit at the end. So we would do like a safety bar squat, superset with like oh. walking lunge. And I remember oh, God. They specifically where we were doing that. And I, you know, that was a, a, a leg day that changed my perception of how far I could push myself. Because <laughs> it I, changed I remember your life. To, yeah. I remember trying to do these body weight walking lunges after the superset of the, the, the safety bar squat. And like I was, I was thinking about moving my legs, and they they literally wouldn't move. And I was like, <laughs> actually, I, I was wrong. And I collapsed. <laughs> and, and, and that would be scary. Me, get up, you have to finish your set. So I would get up, and I would do like two more lunges and fall over again. And he'd be like, "Get up and do it again." And uh, after that workout, unfortunately for me, like where where we moved. Uh, the condo building, we only have one underground oh, no. spot, which, which of course I gave to my girlfriend. So I had to get a practice permit about a three to four minute walk down the street. Okay. So I remember getting home from that night workout and just walking to my condo and just like shaking uncontrollably, like my central nervous system was so stupid. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, what have I done to myself? And I I get home, I sit on the couch, I don't try to eat, <laughs> I don't do anything. I just <laughs> sit there and reflect for like an hour. And I'm reflect. Just like, I, I love it. Yeah, like basically just questioning like, am I gonna keep training with this guy? Like am I and then am I am I like am I actually cut out to be a bodybuilder? <laughs> like like I don't know. Like, <laughs> Put a lot of guilt like, in your head, didn't he? <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. I got if this is what it takes to like keep getting I better. Like, I'm like, I don't, know I don't fucking if I got, got it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but luckily for me, Antoine was in prep, and as his food got lower, we stopped uh, doing yeah. stuff, <laughs> and it became mm -hmm. a little bit more manageable. Still, still really good workouts, of course, but you know that happened, and then I hurt my arm actually, and then that's kind of when we were both just like, okay, this is kind of getting out of hand with this like crazy heavy weights and shit, <laughs> shit that we were doing. Yeah, so then we, it, it was actually you know I, I I'm not happy I hurt my arm, obviously, uh, but it did make me have to lift quite a bit lighter, like for for about six seven weeks, just trying to make sure I didn't like injure it worse or. Or anything like that and it really helped me with my mind muscle connection on everything because oh, cool. for six weeks yeah. Like, yeah i wasn't gonna i wasn't gonna not train like I, I i had to train i kept lasting and kept eating and everything but i was like I, I need to stimulate my muscles with lighter weight so you know i i could still push pretty hard on chest and shoulders but on like back day and arm day and stuff like that i i had to like do really slow reps with lighter weight and and really like mm -hmm. focus on keep attention on the target muscle to make those sets as hard as I could with light weights. And I think it really, really helped my, my muscle connection. And even though I had to lift later, like my back still improved and I was able to keep like making improvements, you know, even with the injury. So, so there's a, there's a silver line in everything, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's always, sometimes there's always reasons you got to find. Yeah. There's always reasons for everything and a little blessing in disguise really. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's the way you got to look at it. I mean, injuries are like the worst things that can happen to you in bodybuilding. You know, they nobody wants mm -hmm. to have them. It's really hard mentally to overcome. Um, I mean, Jamie, you probably know. I mean, you said you tore your bicep twice and a tricep and getting back in the gym after that is, is hard because you're like, you don't, you're afraid it's going to happen again. And, you know, that's just always on yep. your mind. And, and um, yeah, so, but again, there's learning lessons, right? And then learning, if you learn from that stuff, it can make you better in the long run. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Getting back in the gym wasn't a problem. It was, it was progressing and making sure that, it, you know, everything was going good without, uh, without tweaking that or, or hurting it or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Exactly. but it does set you back and, but it, it gives you a better perspective on, on where you where in the long run, where I want to go, where I want to, yeah, so I absolutely. Keep it, it gets in your head. It makes you question things, you know, like that. But, you know, luckily, again, like I was in this atmosphere when I was dealing with that. And I had a lot of guys that mm -hmm. just have this no quit mindset and people that are just like 
put that shit behind you, man. And, and you just got to focus on what you control. Like, like we don't quit. Like, you know, you just keep yeah. going forward. Like no matter what adversity you face, you just keep going forward. And then if you have that mindset, eventually all that shit's just in the past and you've moved on from it and you're continuing to get better. Yeah. Right. So you just can't let that shit yeah. keep you down for too long. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Who's got bigger legs, you or Antoine? Say again. Who's got bigger What's legs, that? you or Antoine? Oh, <laughs> that's close. That's close. I think honestly, we've talked about this. Our, our quads are pretty close to the same. Um, I have bigger glutes, and he has bigger hamstrings. So oh, interesting. That's, that's what. Okay. 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 So it's actually pretty. Common. It's pretty common in bodybuilding for. If someone has strong hamstrings, their glutes are usually weak. And if someone has really strong glutes, their hamstrings are usually weak because that, which essentially means that the one most takes people are over down. the other. Once. Yeah. Exactly. What, yeah. exactly. what if you're like Andy and don't have either? <laughs> <laughs> well, Andy's got a big ass yeah. upper body. So you see you just never. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I had to put that in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah awesome um yeah man so we got about half hour left let's jump into the atlantics if you don't mind we'll get yeah sure cool so yeah you came down for the atlantics and um the uh, at this show the 2024 we had the goddess uh championships as well so if people that are watching that don't know what that is it's uh it's an invite only show where the promoter invites top female competitors uh, bikini and wellness kind of all meshed together to try to battle it out to be um, the 2024 goddess it's invite only i think there's criteria where you've had to have at least won a category you have like like your you had to at least win like your you know division you know, division that's what it is thanks and then, like all the top winners, whoever makes it to the stage, yeah, battles it out for for first place, and becomes uh, the goddess for the next couple of years. So that was pretty cool. So yeah, yeah. And then good. we have our all of our bodybuilding, which this year was great. We haven't had this many besides the gladiators. We haven't had this many like. Uh, heavyweight bodybuilders on stage in quite a while in the East Coast. Mm. Yeah. So. What were there, 10? 10? No. 10 heavyweights? Uh, I think there were seven. Seven, seven. yeah. Seven. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, Morgan, what did you think of the show? How did you came down for it? Uh, why did you come down for it? And what did you think? Uh, well, I always like to sponsor Atlantics because that show, you know, has done a lot for me over the years. That 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 first Gladiator I did, uh, where it came down to me and Prince, uh, like right. that really kind of that put my name out there. And Heather and Tijan helped a lot with that. Uh, and then obviously I won the Gladiator in 2021 before I turned pro. Uh, so I just like to sponsor. You turn, kind of, you know. Go ahead. You turned pro like right after that Gladiators, did you not? Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's a funny thing that a lot of people don't know about me is that I have been bodybuilding for competing for eight years. And the first show I ever won was in 2021. And that was the same show time, the same year I turned pro. <laughs> so, oh, really? yeah. oh man. Really? Yeah. Damn. I, I did, all my, That's did cool. all my winning. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, um, I thought you, yeah, so, I thought you won the PEI or the Newfoundland show too. Yeah, that, that was one week after the Atlantics. Oh, okay. okay. But, but I, I won both. Yeah, I won both of those back to back, and then I turned pro. I think it was eight weeks after the Newfoundland show. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah. So fought through the show, and then I also had six clients do the show as well, uh, which went really well. Everyone came in great. Um, one of my clients won the junior bodybuilding, and he came second in classic physique C to Dan won the overall um had a girl win true novice figure and she won her figure class but lost in the overall um and then i had a couple other clients that placed really well as 
well, didn't well, Caroline placed in wellness masters and, and wellness novice and had a couple bodybuilders who didn't place, but they were in that heavyweight division, uh, with the, you know, had a really good group of guys yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. They both came yeah. massively through from the last show I did with them, bigger, more better conditioning. Both of them were up over 15 pounds from their last stage weight with better conditioning. So that's a huge win, obviously, you wow. know, and, and they were very happy about that. Um, you know, they're, they're, both of those guys, it's only their second or third show. So they understand that obviously in bodybuilding, you know, it takes some time to win. Right. So everybody was happy that, that yep. yeah, that's, that's the main thing. Um, but yeah, as far as the show goes, I mean, yeah, I think a super deep show all around, like was, every division, every division was, was great to watch. It was, it was fun to watch as a spectator. Um, you know, Chris Pinero, he won the overall, um, I helped him win it last year, uh, to see him come back and do it again, uh, with a different coach was, was cool. It was awesome for him. It came down to him and Matt, um, again, Matt, what's Matt's last name? Again, yeah. Corville. Um, Corville. Corville, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Matt, Matt was honestly massively improved. I thought that was super competitive. I, oh, yes. I didn't, yeah, I didn't really know which way the judges were going to go with it, especially because at the very last moment in pre-judging, they had put Matt in the middle, uh, which a lot of times means that, you know, that person's going to win. And, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, it's Matt, uh... Matt, very impressive, you know. Um, but, it, again, I think it could have went either way, and they went with Chris. So, uh, And then with the, with the, with the goddess competition, here, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just gonna pull this up for. Yeah, yeah. We can uh, talk so we'll talk. We'll talk bodybuilding. And then we'll get into the the goddess for a minute. Sure. But uh, yeah, so there's, well, there's Chris. So what I'm gonna and we're gonna what I got is a couple uh, videos that we're gonna play as well. Sure. But after we kind of go through and take a look at Chris, Chris here is in the center. This is his Instagram page. So. He's actually getting ready to do the Toronto Pro right. in six weeks. So his plan, he didn't come in as completely sharp as he as he wanted to. But there's Chris and Matt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but he still ended up taking taking out Matt for sure. Yeah, I think Matt Matt uh, was maybe a little bit. So, Slightly harder, but man, Chris is just 3D on stage. Like he just pops, yeah. right? So yeah, yeah, I think Matt came in a little bit leaner and a little bit harder looking, but then yeah. Chris is a little bit more rounder. Yeah, Chris Hopefully. has that crazy legs, arms. Like he has a lot of detail. All right. Yeah. There we go. Here's a nice. It's a good shot mm-hmm. right there. Yeah, good yeah he's big. Yeah, that is good shot. Uh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, then Chris took the overall, and I'm gonna put up a video here. We got a couple of videos that's the play. If that's cool. We're here with the new champion of a 2024 Atlantic overall bodybuilding winner. Congratulations, Chris Pinero. Thank you, man. Appreciate man. it. So you, you guys hear that? You held your title yeah. for another year. Yeah. Another year. How you feeling? Great, man. Uh, this is the biggest I came in again. Yeah. Last, you look- last year I weighed in 220. This time I was almost 224. Oh, that's and huge. Stage, I was over 225, so I'm happy with that. That's fantastic. Amazing. So I heard you're getting ready for the Nationals? Yes. Uh, six weeks from now, yep. I'll be doing the Toronto Pro Qualifier. Wow. Congratulations. So... Um, the typical question: What are you going to do uh, tonight? Eat all my favorite food. <laughs> yeah, what, what, like what? What is that? Pizza. Yeah. Number one. I got uh, a couple of Ben and Jerry's. Nice. And uh, cheesecake, of course. Cheesecake. Yeah. Cool. All it's right. All fine. <laughs> well, wonderful. So, um, one last thing: uh, You put on some size. Yeah. And what do you think contributed to that? Well, for the past from one year to the next, that's quite a bit in a year. Yeah. So, what did you do to? to uh to put that on uh when i won last year i just 
went back to the gym, um, ate more, trained just as hard, never took much time off. I yes. just kept going, kept eating. Uh, people don't realize you got to eat a lot. <laughs> so I just uh, yeah. was disciplined and ate my meals, never missed a meal, and kept training. Amazing, so. amazing. Do you hear that, kids? Eat your meals. Yeah. And you can have one of these. <laughs> Congratulations, big guy. Awesome. Good job. And we're here with Matt Corivo. He just took home Masters 35 overall. Congratulations. Thank you. And second place in uh, in the overall for bodybuilding. Yeah. Yep. Awesome, man. How are you feeling? Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this prep here is so going into my third show. Um, I feel like the last week was a lot easier than maybe the last maybe three or four. Um, so I'm pretty grateful for that. And just obviously you learn a lot from previous experiences so just last one was a year ago for sure doing the same show a year later um, yeah lots of mental and physical improvements <laughs> yeah, definitely um, yeah so had a lot of fun cool and uh, I'm not too sure what's next but that'll be a discussion for the yeah definitely week. that was going to be a question yeah what's happening Overall, what's the plan because like you definitely killed it and it was I don't know, we were all on stage, we were just like, we, I don't know, we were going back and forth, it was almost a towing cost. It literally was a one point decision between him, second and first place. So it could have went either way, and the audience, I think we were all back and forth, back and forth. It was really close, and but, um, but it is what it is. Yeah. And so, uh, from your last show to this show, what do you think you've improved on the most, and, where, and, and how did you do that? Physically, I would say my abductors, so just filling in that gap. Nice, legs. okay, yeah. Um, legs have always kind of been there. They just may be a little bit bigger this year, which is great. They're huge, dude. <laughs> um, it's just nice to uh, yeah. make comparisons from photos today to last year and right. just like night and day difference. Right. Um, but just overall, um, yeah, so that's probably one of the main, main, main focuses that I've right. uh, definitely worked on. Um, mentally, I just feel like completely different right. headspace. Um, that was going to be a thing. I to support too. So right. Excellent. Support. Thank you. That was going to be one one last thing I was going to ask is having like uh, a definitely a clear mental head coming into this competition versus other shows where it's a little bit more stressful. Absolutely. How, um, how does that play on your physique? Um, it just takes a lot of stress away from just having somebody who's able to just have things in place for you and just like you know what don't worry about this yeah. we'll take care of that um, so that's really a game changer for me uh, just being on my own over the last couple of years and whatnot so just kind of shifting into just a different way of doing things I'm very thankful for and uh, yeah so that's being able to relieve a lot of stress and the right. impacts that that has on your body um, definitely allow us to make much better headway down the road too right so cool. yeah Amazing, dude. Well, congratulations again, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on stage another time. You're going you're gonna to take the overall next time for sure. Hold you to it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It might be you and me next time. Who knows? All right, time Who knows? Tell. Yeah, we'll see. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Perfect. Great. Yeah. Yeah. He did. A, yeah, he did fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so, so we grabbed a couple interviews with some of the overalls. Um, Jamie. Uh, we can't, we're, we haven't mentioned you yet, but obviously you were in it <laughs> and I, I did the show. I was a, you, the, the small guy. I was a little yeah, guy. Dude, you, were, <laughs> that, that, you were sliced up though, man. You, you look awesome. I was, I, I had a lot of, I really enjoyed watching you on stage, uh, the past weekend, like especially your posing right. routine. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks guys. For sure. Like Jamie was going up, and you were in the overall for the. And honestly, I like not because you are a friend of ours and you were on the podcast, but a lot of people had you taking taking it. I don't know if you yeah. agree with that, Morgan, or if actually I should let me put this out there. Chris himself, Chris Panero himself, messaged me and wanted to ask you if you what you thought of the placings and if if it was right. Chris himself. <laughs> So, <laughs> no problem. Ask me. Yeah, yeah. He messaged me. He's like, "Can you ask Morgan what he thinks of the placings?" And if I had and, a lot of people come up to me and tell me that too, but, but so, I mean that's just what people do anyway. Yeah, right. So Your friends, what I, whatever, right? Yes. Yeah, I've been to a lot of bodybuilding shows in the recent years, and I think 
the more I go to, the kind of more I, I get to understand how the judges think, right? Because I've, I've just seen so many classes get played. And I, I guess I understand, you know, what they look for in, in each class, you know, and what what things take precedent over other things, right? So, um, like I said, between Chris and Matt, I think that they were both looked fantastic. Um, I think it could have went either way. I will say, you know, during that prejudging, I I thought Matt like just looked a bit harder, but I think that Chris again has those crazy muscle bellies that you just can't ignore. You know, right. like that three D chest, the arms are crazy, the detail on the legs is crazy. So either one of those guys could have took it, and I think it would have been a good call. Uh, in the overall, at the end of the day, I think it's bodybuilding, and I think that size needs to kind of be the number one thing. Otherwise, you're going to lose a criteria to other classes. You know, I think okay. if it had been classic physique judging, you know, and maybe where they look for more lines and the overall kind of cleaner look and, and posing is kind of taken more into consideration, I could see that, you know, Jamie maybe could have possibly like won that. But with, with, with size being bodybuilding, and Chris still having what pretty good – What it is, yep. Right? Like, if Chris is way off, yeah. then then the, then the guy who's sliced should win, right? But when you have someone who's in a little bit better condition, right, versus a guy who's still in good condition but has a lot more size <laughs> and bigger quad sweeps and bigger arms and a thicker chest and thicker on, thicker on the backside, I think because it's bodybuilding, you have to give mm. it to him, right? So – I think, yeah, I think Chris deserved the overall. Uh, but, again, I mean, it was a fantastic-looking overall, <laughs> right? So. Right, yeah. That was that was one of the more entertaining overall. Um, I loved it. I yeah, loved overall it. pose downs and, like, comparisons that we've had here in a while. Yeah, yeah. I totally understand the that argument that people would have for, for Jamie winning. You know, I think, again, you look super clean, crazy conditioning. You're a great poser. You can tell the experience you have on stage. Like, all that stands out tremendously. So, and that's why you are a champion. That's why you win so often because you have all these things that a great bodybuilder should have, right? So, uh, right. But, but, yeah, but, yeah, again, you know, I, I'm a big guy. And I think if, if I was on stage and I was huge and still in good condition and a guy that was – a lot smaller than me beat me just solely off condition. Mm -hmm. I would be pissed. <laughs> so <laughs> be very... that's how I had to look at it. Yeah, and you Fair know, enough. and if I'm not very big, but I mean, if someone was smaller than me and it did the same thing, and it happened too, that it yeah. happened to me before. Like I was bigger and good condition, but not as conditioned and than beat. That's, so I think that's yeah, that's probably was the same it, consensus when I lost to Dana in 2022. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It was almost the same. It's pretty much the identical it's situation. The it's happened to me before yeah. too. Yeah. Absolutely. It's happened. Mm -hmm. it, happens. it happens every now and then, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But I'm gonna go up to Toronto and put 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 my size against my people, my size people. <laughs> and we'll go there. It's great. Yeah. It's gonna be great to see how you look against other really high level guys that are at your weight. You know, and around the same size as you. Like, I think that's, I think nationals and, and these pro qualifier events is like kind of where you get to re see really where you're at, like up against the other top guys in Canada, other guys that have won shows from different provinces. You know, that would, uh, that will be a good test for you, man. I'm, I'm excited to see how you do. Yep. And these two last shows really pumped me up and got me revved up. So I'm ready to roll yeah. too. I got another six yeah. weeks, no problem. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah, cool. easy. You're You're gonna, gonna run too long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're gonna if we're gonna play Jamie's video before we run too long, and we got and then we got Matt's quick one. Okay, sure. And like bodybuilding amateur. Hour. We got Jamie yeah. Peterson here. He just won two golds. <clears throat> How'd you do that, Jamie? Uh, you, we got a Masters overall you, winner. What did a, you do since PEI? Uh, since PEI, I just. Uh, Took the notion, decided to come in and do the Atlantics, and uh, just went to work. I thought it was pretty good shape for PEI, but I, I dropped down another 10 pounds just by going and going harder and putting a, put a better push on, and I dropped another 10, and it was immaculately a lot better. So yeah, yeah, it was very noticeable. Mm -hmm. You looked amazing. It was a big change from yeah, PEI. You looked amazing, weeks. buddy. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So what's next for you? You're doing nationals? 
yeah, I'm going to take tonight off and I'm going to take tomorrow night and play some bingo and, <laughs> and uh, have some treats. And then Monday morning, it's, it's off to uh, the show for Toronto. We're nice. going to get going. Nice, man. Yeah. Congratulations. You looked amazing. Perfect. Like, Thanks, Dev. A lot better than PI yeah, even. You know what? And I'm, you looked great in PI. I'm going to be 51 in August. Yeah. And I can honestly say I haven't stopped progressing yet. Yeah. Everything, maybe it might be a progression here and then a show where it's stagnant. And then a progression and then kind of a show or two is stagnant. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like when I... When I get a little stagnant, I have enough to push to go that extra little bit to get that another level. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. I'm 51 here in a month or two or a few months, and it's never it hasn't stopped yet. So it's fun. Yeah. Toronto's next, and uh, I can't wait to go eat and have some fun. <laughs> so what are you gonna do next from now till Toronto? Like, what's uh, your game plan? Well, I'm gonna sit back and Andy and I's gonna talk. We're probably gonna put some calories up for a few weeks, and maybe at four weeks or so, we'll kind of judge, see how we're at, and see if the lean is where it is at, and. And we'll probably put a push on for four weeks in. Nice. We'll get a little dry milk there now. Yeah. <laughs> I need some water. Well, you looked, you looked amazing. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dev. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Best luck yet. All right. Thank you. Cool. Dry mouth. I couldn't even hardly talk. <laughs> it makes me dry mouth right now. <laughs> so saying that, Morgan, how long do you think you're going to be? What do you... Do you have any like um, a particular like set plan for yourself for like, I'm going to go X amount of years. I'm going to just go until I, you know, am not getting better anymore or not progressing. Oh, as far as like, how long am I going to bodybuild? Yeah. Like Jamie's still going and saying he's getting better and better. Like that's pretty crazy. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I, I try to really just kind of yeah. 50s, 50s old, Morgan, 50 is old. So don't Dude, say that. <laughs> I, I can tell you right now, I will not be doing this shit when I'm 50. I, I have nothing but respect for you, man. <laughs> I think this is one of the reasons why you're so impressive to me, man. And I always take the time to write you and compliment you because I really mean it because I know what this takes, man. And the fact that you've been doing it so long and you still look so good. Like it's, it's, it's people yeah. just don't get it. Like people, people in that audience at Atlantic just don't get it to look at you and see at your age, how good you look, how tight the skin is, how muscular you are, uh, and, and just how good of a bodybuilder you are. Like, you know, I, I wish more people could understand. I, um, I plan to hopefully get 10 more years out of being a pro, um, you know, at, at my level and my body weight, the things that are required to be competitive are intense, you know, and uh, there's, there's more. I think that may have weight. something to, yeah. I also think yeah. that it has something to do with the longevity of being like a smaller bodybuilder compared yeah, to totally. like a 300 pound plus. I just oh, thought totally. of, just thought of that too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, of course. Of course. You know, I don't have, I don't have to hardly do anything really. Yeah, well, exactly, you know, and like, and I'm, I'm three twenty five, still trying to get bigger, you know, so it's not easy on the body. If I, <laughs> yeah. was, I was never meant to be this big, and you know, but I'm, I'm trying to do what I need to do to get a good, you know, seven, eight, nine years of where I'm competitive as a pro. That's my goal. Like, do I think I'm going to be Mr. Olympia? No, I don't. Do I think I can get to the Olympia? Maybe multiple times. Yeah. Yes. And uh, the way I look at it, I believe that. Now, it's like, I, believe that I want to win. I want to be, I want to be competitive, but it's a career for me. Like it's more of, you know, building a brand, just being relevant. Like, yeah. you know, I also need to make money while I do this. It's not, it's not just a hobby anymore that I do with my job. It is my job, That's right. you know? So I need to do it at a high level, but I need to stay healthy and I need to, be around for a, a decade more so I can continue to build that brand so that when I can't compete anymore, there's something left over for me to make a living on. Right. So these are all things I'm keeping in mind. As I continue to go on my journey, you know? Yeah. That's, That's awesome, amazing. It's good. Um, How many things do you have Morgan? How many, how many what? Train? Oh, how, how many, many people clients? do you train normally? Like, well, I have probably like, I would say around like 50 lifestyle clients and then probably like 20 to 25 competitive clients. But obviously, wow, you know, 
when you, when you have that many clients, it's kind of like a revolving door, obviously. Like, you know, you have people coming, people going, you know, um, like, you know, I just had a show, so I just had a couple of people compete. So I had a couple of people that are going to go do their own thing, but I just picked up like three new lifestyle clients like this week. So that's just kind of like the nature of the business at this point, you know? Yeah. But not to keep me busy. Two more things. I, I think we should. Right. <laughs> <Just> FYI. <laughs> yeah. So, so two more What's things. What's your next plan for your, for your show, Morgan? What's the next show plan? Yeah, so I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start competing like in the spring of next year. I'll probably start prep in like late December, early January. Um, you know, so we have another off season phase before then. Try to get my weight up a little bit higher. Cool. But yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna do the New York Pro, and then the Toronto Pro. Oh, and awesome! Yeah, so and maybe before that, if there's a show like in April or something like that, and then maybe more after that. But right now, those are the two I kind of have my mindset on. Are you planning on YouTubing your any of these shows for your channel? Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. When I, because basically when I when I prep for a show, I, I let my client load like down a lot uh, because so I can have more time to like focus on cardio and posing and things like that. Uh, and then it gives me more time to do mm-hmm. YouTube. Like a lot of people ask me right now about YouTube, and as much as I love doing it, like yeah. Coaching is coaching is taking president for me right now. That that makes me money, you know. For sure. And between yeah, coaching sure. and what I do, and and then staying on top of all the things I have to do for my bodybuilding and uh, my off season like duties, uh, I just you know taking on any more is going to make something important suffer. So, yeah, I'll probably save that for prep, unless somebody wants to come video with me and edit for free <laughs> you know yeah right i'll coach you for free if you do it <laughs> okay okay nice um right before we don't want to run too long here um let's turn around and get back into the atlantics for a second uh the goddesses let's get right into that because we definitely have to mention them because that's kind of one of the big factors of the show that just happened. Um, I'm going to just do another video here of Tiffany. She was the 2022 goddess and uh, she's kicking ass right now in her career too. Uh, We'll just do a quick clip of Tiff and then we'll get into um, our, our other winner here. We uh, welcome to bodybuilders amateur hour. We are at uh, the 2024 Goddess Championships. And beside me here, I have Tiffany Lang. She is the previous champion in the 2022 Goddess uh, Championships. And you're gonna be handing over your title today? I obviously, am. You're not yes. comp- obviously, you're not competing. I am not, no. Um, I have bigger fish to fry, no. <laughs> well, I was invited here tonight um, to help hand over um, my crown and my title. Yeah. So tonight we will be uh, crowning a new goddess and I'm excited to see who that's gonna be yeah that's really exciting how does that make you feel does this does seeing everybody here and all the goddesses getting ready for the show uh, give you a little bit of like FOMO or you feel like you're missing out or you want to be here or what's how is this how, how are you feeling right now um, honestly um, it is very emotional for me I'm very happy and excited to be here I do have a little bit of FOMO I'm not gonna lie yeah. uh, may have been crying all morning but that, that <laughs> that's fine um, but no um, I, I have other plans um, in store for myself and uh, had to make sure that everything kind of lined up with that so I did have to unfortunately uh, relinquish my crown and hand right. it over and give someone else another shot at it but uh, um, I, everybody looks great um, everyone really came out um, with amazing physiques and ready to win so I think everyone is going to have a blast tonight and it's going to be one hell of a show oh, that's wonderful um, so for the new goddess that is going to be crowned tonight do you have any um, any tips or any suggestions for them like wh- how is this going to affect their career if anything Honestly, After their win, sorry. Yeah, no, that that's a great question. Um, for me personally, just in enjoying the whole moment and the experience itself, um, Tijon and Heather really put on an experience where it's very similar to like having an Olympia feel right. and being at an Olympia show. Um, so you kind of build some confidence in yourself and build on that experience and I think that you take that confidence with you on other shows after this um, and just run with it and keep going and you know 
winning the goddess for me really kind of showed that I could do this and that there was so much more out there for me and that I was gonna you know fight for what I wanted and just continue to compete and I hope that the the new goddess does the same and I hope they bring that physique to a national stage and who knows there could be a goddess yeah. that comes out a pro in the next couple of months oh let's hope and that's wonderful well thank you very much for your time I know you're very busy and you're gonna have a, a lot of work to do tonight <laughs> yes. yeah yeah so <laughs> Congratulations on all of your success and your future success because you are killing it and you're going to keep doing it. Thank you so. very much and thank you for having me. I really appreciate right. it and uh, good luck to everyone tonight and I hope you guys have a great night watching. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Cool. She's so, yeah. awesome. Yeah, she's pretty awesome. So that kind of happened with you too, Morgan A. After you, is that kind of how you felt after you won the Gladiators? Um, the gladiator was bittersweet for me, man, because it, it's funny how it all worked out because I won the gladiator and then I went out for the overall for like the Atlantic classic portion of the show and I lost to oh, Derek. No. Blah, 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 right. I just started to show up randomly from Quebec to get a national. You just showed, uh, show. Yeah, right. Eh? Right. I forgot about that. So I right said this after guy that, came out and snuck out of the room. I said, where the hell did he come from? Yeah, so right after that, I, I, me and Derek were joking around and, and having a laugh about it. Because even though I was disappointed, like I, I've always been a good sportsman, and I was congratulating him, but I, I let him know that he wasn't going to beat me at nationals. And then it came down. I, between I, me I was and there. Him. I heard that. Yeah, it came down between me and him for the overall at nationals for the pro card, and and I beat him. So I gave him a big hug in that <laughs> moment. Then I said, I told you so. And then I went and got my pro card. <laughs> but, but Derek's a class act, and he had a laugh with me in that moment as well. And and Derek's still chasing his pro card. You know, I think he I think he has a pro worthy physique. He, it's just a matter of nailing it at the right show for him. Yeah. Right. But but yeah, anyways, back to the goddess. Uh yeah, that was uh that was crazy. What what a group of girls, man. <clears throat> Uh, to watch like with the mix of wellness and bikini I, I thought it was it was pretty cool um to me i yeah, mean Brittany, uh, you know she's amazing she every time she competes she pretty much wins because she has you know such an ideal physique for the for the wellness class um one thing i would like to see from her because i feel like when wellness first came out Brittany was like exactly what they wanted you know but just like every other class there's evolution, right, as time goes on. And uh, I think in wellness now, you kind of see the girls with a bit of a harder lower body than what Brittany brings, uh, especially in the glutes and, like, the glute ham tie. Right. So that's just one thing I think that she, she lacks. That's not to take anything away from her. It's just kind of my personal opinion on what she would have to do if she wanted to, like, continue to improve. Um, to me, like, a Marissa, I can't say her last name, but – she, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> overall. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, she, I mean, her. She. That's a pro she level rocked bikini. it. That's a pro level bikini physique. Like hands down, like her glutes, her hams, her upper body, her flow, uh, her symmetry is like high level pro. So I have no doubt she's going to turn pro this year as long as she continues the peak the way she has. Well. Uh, so between two of them, I mean, I understand though the criteria of the goddess, right? I know that it's it's kind of like a hybrid class, so I, I understand why the judges right. made their decision. They were, uh, but I think when when they were both on stage, like I I couldn't take my eyes off of Marissa just because I thought how just how polished she was and how perfect everything was. You know, to me, she that, overall that was, was like the best. Yeah, I agree. Athlete. You know, so, uh, but either way, fantastic physique. Um, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess the, the judges, just uh, I was going to softer look or something. The more, yeah, I think that they, they mushed, you know, the, you know, the wellness and bikini together and they went for that look where like the, the combination instead of the bikini over one over the other, which, Total like, sense. For I went to go try to pull up Brit for yeah. sure. 
I went to try to pull up yeah. Brittany's uh, Instagram, but it's private, and I not uh, I'm not on there. So we'll just throw up Marissa's for a second. So yeah, this is yeah, Marissa. I mean, like I mean, insane, like, insane. Like like there we go with the the glutes and the hams, the glute tie-ins at the bottom there. Like right. Yeah, like the glute development there, like the fullness that she's able to maintain with that level of conditioning. That's like that that's right. exactly what the for, you know. Yeah. And like when she turns her mid her midsection is on point too, where it's like I'm not sure if the video has her turning, but it's Super tight. Uh, Super pretty wild tight. to see in real life. Yeah. But Yeah, she came to they get her to turn and walk. Yeah, that is like yeah, that's the ideal bikini right there. Yeah. But, yeah, like the glutes are just out of there. We go. Yeah. That's a nice. That's a nice photo. And the delts are perfect. So, the core yeah, is perfect. She, yeah. That's yeah. just insane. Yeah. Is that money flaws on that one? There's yeah. Yeah. Um, I wonder if and, you're planning on going further. Is she going to do nationals as well? Uh, I'm not, I'm said not she's sure, to be honest. She said she's going to do the amateur Olympia. I think, yeah, she's holding off well, to do that one this year. All right. I remember kind of. You should, I mean, um, I, if, if yeah. I was here, I would be literally driving to Toronto right now <laughs> to, to do the pro qualifier. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. There's the, you yeah. know, I was I have no idea what's going on in her life. Like, I'm sure people have all like tons of reasons to do different shows, but you know, if she could bring that, she brought that physique to Toronto Pro Qualifier. It's hard to imagine that she wouldn't be walking out of there with a pro card. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree for sure. Well, maybe she'll maybe she'll listen to this and take off and do it. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I will. <laughs> very, yeah. Yeah. It's very possible. Yeah, I know she does. I, I know uh, she does watch the show every now and then. I got a consultation call. I have to hop on there now, guys. Um, All so right, right. We're past, I... we're past the hour mark. Morgan. Yeah, this was a good chat. I really appreciate you guys having me on. Seriously, I, I wish I had more time for you today. I'm just, I'm just running a tight ship here lately. That's all. That's all good. You got, you got, you got to make yeah. money. I appreciate yeah, what you yeah, said, yeah. Morgan. I really do. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I mean it, man. And uh, Andy, you're doing a fantastic job with my man over here. So. Good job to you too, bro. He Thank is. He, he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's great. He's he's great. Going yeah, on. You guys are a great team. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. You guys are going to kill it at uh, Intrato. Cool. All right, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Morgan. Appreciate it. Okay. See you, buddy. See you, Morgan. <clears throat> hey, let's just keep rolling here for a sec. You all right? All right. Um, yeah, I have another video. Um, we actually spoke with Kiva, Kiva Bundy which is, uh, oh, yeah. he's a, yeah, we brought him up on stage and we, he is, um, uh, he is a, a head, not a head judge. He's a judge for the CPA. And, uh, we got him to explain the, the rules Great. of the rules of the goddess kind of like breaking it down. And because we're really curious, cause it's a little different than any, it's just like a, it's a whole new category, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but where is it at? Um, the only thing is, I got no. Something happened and there was no audio. Oh, shit. We lost the audio, which is really too bad. That sucks. Um, Kiva, yeah. Kiva swindled me out of 100 bucks. Swindled you out of 100 bucks. Here's, here it is. What'd you, do, bet, you bet no, on me. <laughs> no audio. There is no audio. Uh, and before we yeah, go, I had no uh, intentions of getting the backstage pass, and then uh, he was sitting there beside Tijon at the de at the desk there when we were walking through. When I was walking through with Chris, and uh, yeah, yeah, he sold me. He sold me on it just like that. <laughs> oh man, hundred bucks. Yeah, it's about cool to go backstage though. It is. It is pretty fun back there. Yeah, it is. Yep. It is. Yeah, well, I love. We love having you back there too. No, there's always something going on. 
better for us. <laughs> yeah, it makes a big difference for the athletes. Um, yeah, yeah. And there's no uh, there's no cell reception there either, so it was nice to have <laughs> just to know what was going on, right? You could pop back and forth yeah. and, you know. Yeah. Right. Um, before, we, before we head out, I'm going to play. I do have, we did talk to Brittany, the goddess winner. I want to give her her moment as well. Everyone else was amazing, but this is the goddess champion. And uh, she just definitely deserves every bit of uh, recognition. Oh, yeah. Uh, she looks Because phenomenal. she looked phenomenal. Is right. Yeah. And she always does. And this is, she probably has a trophy wall just like yours, Jamie. So we are here with the 2024 champion, the goddess champion. Congratulations. Um, so how are you feeling right now after winning such a prestigious uh, event? Honestly, I'm a little shocked. I don't know. I just was kind of, uh, this prep was just a little like, not off necessarily, but just different for me. So I thought I just kind of tried my best and I was okay with even making top three. So I'm a little mind blown, but I love this. I love it. I'm so happy, so thankful. So yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So um, when was when was your last competition? It was actually, oh, it was actually the last goddess, so 2022, I guess, okay. yeah, and um, I did, like, the short category, and then I did wellness as well. Fantastic. So, yeah. between the two shows, what do you think you improved and brought up to take the overall in this one? I did bring in maybe a little bit of a smaller package, believe it or not. I think last time I was a little bit maybe more fuller in the legs, especially in the arms. So, yeah, maybe just a little bit more of a tighter package. My posing a little bit more improved, yeah. too. So, yeah. Very nice, very nice. So when you say you brought in a smaller package, that's fantastic. Did anyone help you do that? Do you have a coach? Um, I actually coach myself. <laughs> I know, crazy. But I actually took a year off of training, like last year. Life just got a little busy, yep. so I think I just atrophied a little bit of muscle too. So I guess it was a little bit easier going into the show being smaller to begin okay. with that way. But, yep. Well, congratulations. And um, tonight, what are you doing tonight? How are you celebrating? I don't know. Maybe some drinks and pizza. Yes. Uh, maybe Cosmo apparently is a place to be. Maybe we'll go there. So, Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. All right, one more question. Um, after this win, what um, what are you going to be doing? Or do you have future plans in the in the sport? Hmm, I'm not 100% sure yet. If I could do anything, I'd probably do the Olympia Amateur. Heck and that yeah. might be my last nice. show mm -hmm. for maybe a while. Who knows? But, yeah, I mean, I'm 34, so I'm getting a little uh, close nothing. to the end of my competing career. I don't know. But we'll see. We'll see. I would like to do the Amateur Olympia, though, yeah. just for fun. Right? It'd be an amazing, uh, amazing way to go out or yeah, right? or a nice stamp on the resume. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. So let's do it. Yeah. All right. So congratulations again. And uh, you looked absolutely amazing up there so good job <laughs> nice josh you're a pretty good interviewer buddy oh i honestly dude there's none none of that is rehearsed it's just i just go and i like hope i don't mess oh. up <laughs> pretty good hey yeah. thanks yeah she did fantastic and that'd be really cool to see her back up on the amateur olympia maybe like her and um yeah, it would just be really cool to see her keep going. She's like fantastic. And 34, what is that? Oh, there one sec, go. Jamie. Sorry, Jamie, you're muted. You're back. There you go. Okay. I said fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I said That's 34, funny. really. She looks amazing. She's got yeah. tons of time left. Tons of time. Yeah. She it's does just look matter amazing. If she, if she wants to do it or not. That's all. Right. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wish uh, I might be able to edit in some photos of her, but right now her Instagram is is hidden, is private, so I can't get on and pull them up. But uh, maybe I'll try to get some photos of her and throw it up here if I can, if I have some time. But uh, yeah, she, yeah, she's a, definitely an inspiration and a self coach, which is pretty cool. I could Holy not do shit, it. Right? Yeah, Respect I couldn't do that. it. Yeah. Have to be a pretty calm person. <laughs> make your own decisions. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. That was a good compliment, the sheer, Briggs. The, the sheer Sorry. size of Morgan when he was walking around at the show. He was like two feet from enormous. chest to back. Yeah, I know. Like crazy. He doesn't even look like a human. No, he no, doesn't. He, he looked like the miniature Hulk. Like, you know, how the Hulk transition, he gets about halfway through. Then he goes right. the same size of the house. He's about halfway through. 
It's like crazy. he's the same size as a car. But you know yeah. the interesting thing is when you see him, but then you see him next to other pros. They're all like oh, yeah, kind of the same. Yeah. Like that's how big these guys are. Yeah. Like, well, when, when, he's, when, he, when he's when he's standing Ant- beside Antoine or when he's like they're like just when he different... said Antoine's legs were almost like what they were the like, same size. It's it's like, holy fuck. Yeah. Like Antoine's a, not as big a man stature as as Morgan. He can't right. be. You know, no. he can't be Morgan's big. six foot four or six foot three, whatever it is, isn't he? Is he that tall? Okay. Oh, he's pretty, fucking tall. Pretty, yeah, he's tall. Pretty big. Yeah, but it's like annoying. you know, you're just you're born to do something, right? When you're when you look like that. Yeah. So yeah. you come out of your mother's vagina with with uh, six with ten inch quads. <laughs> you're just like <laughs> it's like. <laughs> yeah. Can you edit maybe. that out, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. Oh. Anyway, well, guys, I think that was, that yeah. kind of is a wrap on the Atlantics. I like to say that also, if if everyone's if people are still stuck around to to the end of this, thanks to Heather and Tijon too, right? They put on like yeah. an amazing hey. top notch show. I've been to many shows, and I've been mm-hmm. to like pro shows and like really like top tier shows that do not even come close to the Atlantic no. on the, no. on the quality and entertainment of the, the entertainment package, the it's whole a big overall thing. Spectacular yeah. is what it is. Yeah. So good job. And thank you that we have such, we're lucky to have such a prestigious show. Mm-hmm. Uh, so close to home, right? We are. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Very fortunate. And, very fortunate. Yeah. So they do yeah. a wonderful job, and every year they do, they do it, and they keep up in it and up in it. And I don't know what they're going to do next year. It's crazy. Right. It was fun. So, I was. I'm so glad that uh, I jumped in and decided to do this one to break up between the Toronto because it it was a doozy. Yeah. It was a dandy. Yeah, mm-hmm. you did amazing. And it was good. It was good that Morgan explained that, like he, like his thoughts on the overalls too, right? For and, sure, you know, makes sense. That's so. It, it makes sense. It makes sense. I mean. It's, you know, it's clearly one way, way, one way, and clearly the other way, the other way. So, yeah. bodybuilding yeah. is bodybuilding. Right. Yeah. We like, we like big. <laughs> right. And, yeah, yeah. and, and big. sometimes, when genetics have a play, we it's, some things are out of our control, regardless yes. of how much we train and eat. Yeah. But yeah. that doesn't mean you should. People that are watching, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it if you're not six foot and three hundred pounds, right? No. Nope. Just, just do it. And just yeah. love it and enjoy enjoy it. If you love it, you'll enjoy it. Yep. No matter whether if you win, lose, or I mean, you can only take loses so many times, but still. <laughs> yeah. If if you're in it for the long hauls, you're gonna lose sometimes. So. Yeah. Anyway. For sure. Well, gentlemen. Well, before we go, I just want to remind everyone to like, subscribe, share, and don't forget. Get to a- hit that bell button. There you go. Yep. Thank you. Finally, we always will save it to the end. <laughs> Hit that bell button. Yep. That awesome. Okay, yeah, man. And leave some comments below because the comments always always help with the algorithm. And um, leave us some questions too for our next episode. We mm-hmm. we're always in search of a new interesting guest, um, amateur or pro. We wanna we wanna talk to everyone that has a really cool story. So if you think you have something. Leave us a comment. Let us know, and and or have a question for us because sometimes we'll just get on here and just shoot the shit and talk and answer viewer questions. And I always find those super hilarious. Yeah, so fun. Yeah. All right, guys. So again, all right. Thanks. Good chat. Good job, boys. Have a good evening. We'll see us later, see you guys. Peace. Right. Time to eat.